بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وآل آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد كل نفس ذائقة الموت every soul shall taste death and we will all return to Allah سبحانه وتعالى so every day ulama explain like how the sun rises one day we rose then there will be the zenith and the sun will set one day every day we should prepare like it's our last day sallu salatan muwaddain read every salah like it is your last salah when a person has the reality of the qabr and akhirat they will not have time for merry making enjoyment amusement like how allah subhanahu wa explains for the kuffar darhum ya'kulu wa yatamattau wa yulhihim al-amal leave them let them enjoy they want to enjoy their food their drink their merry making their leisure their pleasure and forget allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the people of iman are constantly alladhina yadhkuruna allah qiyama wa qu'uda they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all conditions whether they are sitting, whether they are standing, whether they are reclining, whether they are on the ground, whether they are in the air, on an aeroplane, on a railway, on a byway, on a sideway, wherever they are on earth, the people of Iman are constantly remembering Allah and remembering Akhirat. So, إِنَّمَا الْأَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi started his kitab to show uh, the beginning of the amal is important and imperative and likewise the end of the amal إِنَّمَا الْأَمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ the end of the amal as well so our end of our life is crucial likewise the end of the year is crucial likewise the end of the day is crucial that's why morning after Fajr beginning of the day we engage in dhikr and between Asr and Maghrib engage in dhikr to start the day and end the day with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people of Iman are always checking themselves before the Amal, during the Amal and when the Amal ends. So Shaitan promises a person, deceives a person and he will use the same principle. He will make sure when an Amal is initiated then the intentions are void and not optimized. Likewise at the end of the Amal. So for Shaitan the climax of the, the celebration of Iblis, his celebration, his birthday party, his inauguration, he'll end in style and he wants mankind to end with the Amal of Jahannam in Hellfire. So whether the year ends with Masya and starts with Masya, we will notice that this is a climax of disobedience. So if a person's year ends in turmoil and ma'asiyat and disobedience, then how will their life end? So we need to ponder and think uh, these days are not just days to pass, but are days to make and prepare for akhirat. So it is a, a very crucial time in our life. We find most sin and guna is connected to free time. So in this time here, many a lady in hijab in Parda exposes a sitter and removes a hijab. Many a bearded, Mubarak bearded person trims their beard and shaves their beard. Many a tahajur guzar under musalla in the darkness of the night becomes a movie and internet guzar. Many a virgin chaste person breaches their chastity. Many a person who lowers their gaze can't lower their gazes. Many a punctual five times namazi in the masjid doesn't even see the masjid in this time. Many a knowledgeable scholar, a person of ilm becomes a jahil and ignorant during this time. Many a dhakir, a person who's constantly remembering Allah becomes ghafil, negligent and unaware of Allah. Many a sakhi, generous person in Allah's path becomes generous in the devil's path. Many a cautious muttaqi, a love-hearing person with regards to all aspects including the eating and diet and the source of food becomes uncautious and consume anything. Many obedient child, a obedient child becomes disobedient. Many a person 
who is on the path to Jannah chooses the path to Hellfire and Jahannam. So we have to tread cautiously on this road to Akhirah. Shaitan has laced it with traps, deception and landmines. So we have to tread this path very cautiously and make sure we don't get caught by splotting. Like the boss told his employee, do you believe in life after death? So the employee replied, yes sir, sure, 100%. I believe in life after death. So the boss said, that's good because after you left early yesterday to go to your grandmother's funeral, you took leave yesterday to go to your grandmother's funeral, she called for you. She called for you. So we have to be very cautious. We think so, we got it under control. We think and presume we know what we are doing, but we are, th we are being conned. And we should make sure we're not caught in the strap like the rewite of Ibn Umar radiallahu anh, Huma, where we were encouraged that لا تدخلوا على هؤلاء الملؤونين The places of vice are common, the places of Allah's disobedience is common. Those people whom Allah has cursed and the azab of Allah is lurking on their shoulders, do not go near them or the, their places. إلا أن تكونوا باكين Except that you should be in tears knowing very well that Allah's adab may come and I may be in that vicinity. فَلَا تَدْخُلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ أَيْ يُصِيبَكُمْ مِثْلُ مَا أَصَابَهُمْ That that same thing and calamity which Allah's azab came and the actions that they did which drew the calamity of Allah, you shouldn't be near those places. So look at the origins of the new year. The people of Iman are going to those places where they are celebrating New Year. And what is this New Year? When Julius Caesar established the 1st of January, and thus Janus was the Roman god of doors and gates, where two faces, one looking forward and one backward, and thus was the Roman god of beginnings. And his two faces allowed him to look to the past and to the future, to look to the past and to look to the future. Only Allah can see the future. Only Allah knows all the details of the past. This has been attributed uh, to, to the idols and, and the Roman gods and celebrating shirk and, 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 and idolatry worship. So even January was named According to this, for the door of the year, it's an opening door to the year. And in that period, there were violent actions which took place where eyewitnesses said the blood flowed in the streets and it was celebrated. The pagans, the Romans, celebrated. And we need to go back in time in history and see in history has repeated itself by engaging in drunken orgies, rituals, in acting uh, disobedience and ma'asiyat and they believed that th these acts would uh, would uh, stabilize the, the, the cosmos which, which is controlled by the gods. So they were committing disobedience and they believed that they are making the gods happy. Naudhu Billah. So Darkness upon darkness upon darkness and the people of Iman still frequent these places, still go spectate the fireworks, fireworks. So thus in itself, we should get worked up when we see fire because it should remind us of the fire of Jahannam, not a celebration. If we look at devil worship, satanic worship, it's got to do with the fire. Fire worship was part Many, many centuries, the, 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 the Zoroastrians, the, the fire worshippers, the, the sun worshippers, worship shaitan. This is the climax of, of darkness and his destiny is hell fire. And he wants to bring the fire into this world to say, you worship this fire, 
then you're going to be like me, go to the fire. So my destiny and your destiny is the same. Look at the history of the fire worshippers. Look at when Nabi Alayhi was was born and the fire got extinguished. The Noor, the true light of Nubuat, extinguished the false gods, the false idols, the false lights of Shaitan. Islam is here to extinguish fires, take people away from the fire of Jahannam, not ignite. Unfortunately, even Muslim countries take pride in these celebrations and spend so much money for satanic devil worship, celebrating the success of Iblis Abu Dhabi 2009. 20 million dollars, they broke the world record for the most expensive fireworks on earth which lasted for 55 minutes in celebration to the UAE's 37th National Day. What should be the people of Iman celebrating? Kuwait 2012 uh, 15 million dollars, 77,282 shells, marking the 50th celebration. What celebration? What was Hijrat, the Islamic calendar for? Celebration of Mujahada, celebration of preservation of Deen. Dubai, 6 million dollars. They hold the world record for the largest pyrotechnic show on earth. This was in 2014, 400,000 shells releasing 479,651 shells in 6 minutes, around 80,000 shells per minute, 1,332 fireworks per second, 6 million dollars. And how many months in advance preparations were made? We don't even prepare for our Salah in advance, for our Hajj in advance, for our death in advance, like we're preparing for Israf and wastage. And where did the Illuminati originate from? What are they illuminating? Shaitan! Go back to the Olympics! Go! The word Lucifer in Latin, Lucifer is the light bearer and in Greek phosphorus. Phosphorus is, is highly flammable. It's uh, pyrophoric means it's self-igniting when it comes in contact with air. This is Lucifer. So in classical mythology, the morning star and, and the, the planet Venus which, which adorn is perceived personified as, as a male figure bearing a torch. Olympics, we see a male figure bearing the torch. This torch represents the occult arts, the occult scientists, the the doctrines, the dogmas, the 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 principles of battle and falsehood, the magic wand, light at the end of the wand. So darkness. So even the, the, the Olympics was a duel. And what duel is it significa, uh, signifying? It is the duel now currently where Shiatin are overpowering us. And the climax of the duel, like how the best men on earth will, 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 will challenge each other for the gold and the Olympic torch. Thus, Duel, which shall come at the end of time between Dajjal and Hazrat Mahdi and Isa alayhi salatu was salam. So it's symbolic of the torch, the, the torch, the, the Luciferian belief or the, the final battle of Armageddon. So Shaitan, Lucifer and conquering this earth, the same Olympics is prepping humanity for this year. One of the Masonic publishing houses is called the Torch Press. So look at the, the, the Statue of Liberty was, uh, was given 
the, the Illuminati, the French Freemasons, 1876. So it was towering, it was high, it was shimmering. But what, what does the statue hold? The hand of a torch of fire. This light is a light of the Masonic order, the Illuminati, their heritage. So it's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a personification of the new world order. And in the olden days, the, the, the chariot race, races, the gladiators, this was the celebration of the, the demon gods, the satanic gods. So the Olympic games, games were based on, on, on these pagan rituals and, and, and festivals. And it was gathering the best of people to sacrifice for the gods on Mount Olympus. And the main god was the sun god, the fire god, Baal, which was Lucifer, triple six. Even if we go back to the history of the Olympic Games, which date back to 776 BC, all is dedicated solely for the gods. And then even the, the Emperor Theodosius banned it because it was a pagan cult. And uh, then again, it, 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 it got momentum. So Namrud, Babil, uh, 1800 BC, this, this whole new world order, and this torch which represents the fire. So it's, it's, it's moving from, from country to country. It's, it's carrying the flag, the light of uh, Shaitan. So this Roman calendar, it's... It's all, no, no origin at all, no, no basis whatsoever. That's why uh, Imam Behaki has mentioned uh, uh, with regards to this year that وَتَشَبُّهْ بِهِمْ يَوْمَ نَيْرُوزِهِمْ وَمَهْرَجَانِهِمْ لَا تَعَلَّمُوا رَطَانَةَ الْأَعَاجِمْ Umar radiallahu anhu has said that do not learn be part of the language of the non-Arabs means even do not go close to their language because once you compromise on language you compromise on everything else so he forewarned at that time وَلَا تَدْخُلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فِي كَنَائِسِهِمْ يَوْمَ عِيدِهِمْ and do not even go close to to their places of worship. Imagine, if he was alive today, we are told not to even go to the places of worship when they are celebrating their days of worship. Because the anger of Allah is descending. That's why uh, Shaykh al-Islam al-Alama ibn Taymiyyah iqdaw sirat al-mustaqim as mentioned uh, the rewrite of Abdullah ibn Amr man marra bi bilad al aajim you you passing by a, a country a town a city of uh, the non arabs the disbelievers fa sanaa nayruzahum wa mahrajanahum and this person becomes part and parcel of their celebrations and whenever they celebrate he's part of their celebrations until death takes over him then he will be resurrected with them on the day of Qiyama so like how it's not permissible to assist them, to be part of them, to be connected to anything of them. بِإِتِّفَاقِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ Which the ulama are unanimous. وَقَدْ صَرَّهَ بِهِ الْفُقْعَةِ And the scholars have mentioned it here. وَلَا يَجُوزُ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ أَنْ يَحْضُرُوا عَيَادَهُمْ It is not permissible for the Muslims to be close to any of their celebrations because their actions are destructive and deception and 
if the people of good and iman mix with the people of evil it's as if they are happy with this action fa nakhsha min nuzuli sakhati allah ala jamaatihim we are fearful that allah's azab may descend so the islamic year starts with amal ends with amal hajj hajj tauba clean your books start with good deeds muharram starting with good deeds starting everything is haram this obedience is haram being in the places of vice is is haram and forbidden and hijri is to show hijrat for deen that our sacrifice is for deen our joy is when deen comes alive and everybody makes you your resolutions then these new re- resolutions don't ever materialize if we have to do it then it has to be coupled with dua and amal for qabuliyat only tawfiq from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and many people make uh, false and worldly resolutions somebody said i made a new re- resolution to stop lying to myself about making lifestyle changes because it's just about a lie it was fun while it lasted my new year resolution somebody said i don't call it a new year resolution i prefer to call it casual promises to myself that i'm under no legal obligation to fulfill so it's just words the shaitan is caught people in the trap somebody said i will put an end to procrastination once and for all somebody else said i will my resolution is i will use my treadmill for something else then dry my towels somebody else said i will stop setting three alarms on my phone that's my resolution somebody said i will start saving for the future the very imminent future I will finally get rid of all the clothes that I know I will never again wear. Our wardrobes are full. We don't ever get rid of it. I promise to buy a brand new scale because my mind keeps reading the same old numbers. I'm going to go on a diet and exercise every day. I will definitely lose weight this coming year. I resolve to work with neglected children. That is my own children. So let us resolve to make tawbah turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do the amal that will be a means for our maghfirat and closeness to Allah wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.